Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to Advertising. Today we're going to be talking, uh, we're going to be covering Chapter 15, which is using digital interactive media in advertising. Stating all that, what does that mean? We're going to be talking about the internet. A little history about the internet, uh, some uh, uh, pluses and negatives of advertising on the internet, uh, uh, what's going on. You know, certain terminology you should know if you're going to be uh, buying space on the internet. Um, let's see, some problems with internet advertising. You're going to look how uh, the media evolved over, I think from 1990, it really uh, expanded. What happened in 1990 when the internet was introduced, and now where the internet is now, it's almost like a, a everyday requirement that everyone has to have an internet connection. Who doesn't have an internet connection? Okay, and now internet as a medium and measuring an internet audience. That's a little bit difficult, because you remember, you're on, this, uh, on the internet, uh, I might see the advertising, but do I really see them? Do I just glance through them? Or what is, how are they gonna measure it on the internet? Especially from an a, a agency, they're gonna say, George, uh, Google's one, we're gonna give you so much exposure, and here's uh, for your business. And I said, okay, excellent. And do I just take their word? So there's, uh, like we did for the radio, like we did for the um, uh, for the TV ads and for the print ads, there's always some way that we have to be able to make sure that when they're telling us that we will have so much of a frequency or so much exposures that they actually are uh, standing by and that the word is, uh, there's a way I can measure it to make sure that I am uh, uh, actually getting what I'm paying for. Okay, so let's look about our uh, chapter objectives, okay? So remember, uh, this is a supplemental class to uh, my face-to-face uh, -face class. And this is also uh, the only lecture you will have on my online classes, but we do a lot of talking in the forums. And remember, the forums always replace the lectures uh, if you would be taking me for a face-to-face -face class. So what are our uh, chapter objectives to, for this week's study? Various opportunities and challenges presented by digital interactive media. It opened up a whole new way. The internet opened up not only, uh, it, it, from a business perspective, it allowed me to reach customers that were never been able to reach in a local uh, area. So now I've expanded to a regional area, I could expand to a global area. Depends on the internet, depends on how much I want to spend and depends where and who I'm trying to target as my audience or my receiver. Uh, of my message, okay? So that's audience and challenges involved in measuring it. It's a little, a little different. Uh, how internet advertising is brought and sold. Just general idea. Uh, so you have to remember, uh, uh, the course you're taking me now is a fun, uh, a foundational class, which gives you a good understanding about uh, all the different aspects of uh, uh, advertising. So don't uh, be overwhelmed if you don't remember all of it. You have the book, you have my concept maps, you have uh, uh, different software, that's been provided for you for, uh, to help in, in, uh, enhance your learning ability, okay? Uh, define the various kinds of internet advertising, uh, a debate, uh, the pros and cons of internet as an advertising medium, okay? And then we'll, we'll find out, when you did the reading and you looked at it, the internet does not utilize as heavily as it should, but it's beginning to pick up its own personality, its own way of, um, uh, for an advertiser to reach a different kind of a, uh, to reach their audience, but could be more interactive, could be open 24 seven. But it's that elusive audience. How do I get to them? And how do I make sure that I am sending my messages to the right individuals? And, and how do I measure that they receive the message and they are coming to my store for whatever my campaign uh, objectives were, okay? Let's see how uh, media evolved. Okay, so this is a PowerPoint real quickly. Media evolution, door-to-door -door sales, you know, radio and television, and remote control, you can have to get up, made us a little lazier. You know, uh, uh, TV Vive, uh, uh, PCs, mobile phones, internet, HD, uh, you know, high-definition television, uh, you know, iPods, DVDs, uh, iPod, uh, uh, TVDs, and VOP uh, 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 addresses. So when I'm looking at the TVs now, most of the TVs coming in, you had to, if you wanted to, to do streamlining, for lack of better words. 
They're already all programmed. I just gotta plug it in. I don't even need an internet connection. It's all Wi-Fi, it's all connected. So technology is opened up a whole way of entertainment for my target audience. I have to be able to learn how they interact or utilize this new tool we call the internet. Remember when we talked about consumer behavior? How do I know when to put the triggers in? How do I know where uh, uh, where to place my ads? You know, what time of the day, what morning? Now, the Internet's a little different because it's open 24-7, but it still has some personality. It still has some uh, uh, boundaries. It still could be managed, very manageable. That's what you'll find out in here. At least a brief uh, overview. Okay, so we have that. So we have all these. So that took care of you know, old and new. And basically, there's no real old and new. You have a combination, a meshing uh, between the two uh, uh, different media, uh, uh, mediums. Okay, internet as a medium. So let's look at this. Online spending. Let's look how much people are spending online. Spending lots of money online, especially a certain generation. Online spending, uh, $200 to $2,000 dollars and billions. After three years of contraction due to recession, dot bus, e-marketers track a rebound in 2003 and predict you. They look, from 2003 and predicts uh, continued expansion. Here's the online spending in billions of dollars. We're in 2015, give or take. We're about $55 uh, billion. By 2016, we're 65 to 70. If we do proper advertising, we could increase. That's, uh, that's another way of uh, uh, communicating to our customers. We well, just still need the print, you still need the radio, still need the television, but Internet's another tool, another receptacle, another way of me to reinforce and present my, uh, my uh, uh, advertising campaign and also be interactive with my uh, audience, which I couldn't do before, okay? So we have that, you know, private centralized networks, okay, so uh, internet, global network, computers com uh, con uh, that communicate with one another through uh, protocols, okay, just real general information. If you're taking information systems, you have all that. Protocols are common rules for linking, sharing information. That's all it is. Well, uh, how do I connect from one computer to the other? So I have to understand that. You know, PowerPoint and uh, centralized. If I'm looking at centralized networks, so everything is from here, a lot more, it's easier to control because I could control the message to different uh, 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 target audiences, for lack of better words, or different individuals in the network. But most networks on the internet aren't like this from the central. It's nice to have it. They're a distributed network. So I may have the central here, it goes here, and this one does something, takes part of it or all of it. And so it's a different kind of a maze which makes it more interesting, but makes it more challenging for me when I'm trying to figure out um, uh, you know, usage and frequency and uh, consumer behavior on the internet. Trust me, they do. Every time you click on the internet, when you go to a site, you're being monitored. They already know what you're doing. That's how they learn the behavioral uh, aspect of consumer behavior, uh, or where to put the uh, advertisements and uh, how often and where should they be placed. Okay, central uh, uh, centralized networks, hub as a TV station, newspaper, publisher, or cable company, distributes contracts to uh, many receivers. And if I had this, I would had this as centralized, we talked about it, kind of looks nice like a star, right? I uh, like the little visual on there. Uh, distributed network, revolutionary system. And what it makes it revolutionary, because I don't have to do a central, I could do little, Bits I could send out to different uh, markets, for lack of better words, from advertising. This is uh, a godsend, but to manage it and to plan to control it, it's a little more complicated, a little more costly. It looks easier online uh, uh, on the face uh, value of it, but it's a little more costly. Internet difference from traditional media, whether they had distributed work, network offers continuous con communication. I could now say I'm open 24-7. And I had, could be, I could somebody living in their home, a lot of time you had the avatar, you know, typing along, if I'm looking at the site, just to look at some pricing, all of a sudden, people, hey, can I help you with your shopping experience? Where did this person come out? Because they already saw I'm, I was moving. I uh, uh, opened up certain boxes or certain windows that indicated that I may be in the position to buy. 
So let's halt the buying process. Okay, internet space fails inexpensive content delivery in multiple uh, uh, places uh, simultaneously in various times. Blurs line between content providers and consumers. The last one we talk about smartphones. Smartphones is another thing with the internet that they tie in. So when I look at the internet, the smartphone, you know, uh, very little. We're going to talk about social media. I have another chapter that will be more in tune and more uh, 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 expanded a lot more here. This is just, just telling you a general idea about the different things of the internet, you know, pricing. And most of us are uh, fairly comfortable, but it's kind of nice to know that the finished World Wide Web, uh, and I think here, uh, uh, overview, you know, and when I look at, you know, a content provider, wage, you know, HTML is just a way to, that they could read the information, web page, a browser, content user. Okay, so let's go. 1990s, that's not too far away. And, you know, a couple of, uh, about 15, 20 years, right? 20 years, 2000, yeah, about 25 years, give or take. Look how much we went from the internet when it used to be an old little thing, just uh, one email. Now we can't live without. Well. We get our resources, we do our education. You're taking this class online, uh, right? There's particular uh, uh, access to a particular part of the internet, the World Wide Web, www, uh, hypertext markup language, web pages allow uh, for relatively easy creation and displays. I think AOL was the leader in that. You didn't have to be a computer whiz. You just clicked and, and they did everything else by just visuals and everything else is there now if i look at most internet users we don't need the aol version we do our own searches and we know everything else because we understand the tools and we are more uh, savvy in how to utilize the tools uh, on the internet look if you don't know anything about the internet and you're going into advertising you're going to be at a, at a disadvantage i don't even know why i'm saying that everyone knows something about the internet even your granny Older individuals know how to know what an email is. You got mail or something else, so it's out there. More people feel very comfortable. It's just like the phone now; they have no issues with it. Doesn't mean it's not safe. You know, you still have some issues. Okay, now a web browser software that uh, interpret the HTML later code to permit greater interactivity such as Suns, Java, uh, 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 Adobe's uh, Flash. So a lot of times you got to do, uh, you know, for the Flash, you got to go up there if you want to see the, the, the videos, you want to see some kind of action, you got to allow a certain software to be on your computer. By allowing that co uh, computer, we may get cookies or we might have some connections. I'm an advertiser. How do I get information? You know, internet audience, if I look at the PowerPoint, just look at this. If I look at Google uh, uh, ranks uh, audience, you know, uh, 183 uh, million, that's a lot. You know, Microsoft is next. Uh, Facebook, Yahoo, uh, Amazon's doing pretty good with their buying. Interactive Corp, AOL is dropping, but it's still up there in the big uh, individual. Uh, with P uh, Foundation, Apple Computers down in here, but not as much as theirs, about half, give or take. But they're changing their model. If you look at Apple, they're more interacting with IBM, with Google, Microsoft. That's the business sector. You can fight it all you want. You're not going to change it. How do I get tap into that sector by making some uh, uh, modifications to my software for the interface? Okay, and then eBay. Drop it down, you know. Population region Africa, you know, 13 to penetration, not too much. Asia 26 is a lot of open. Asia uh, will take care of uh, China and India. There's uh, 3 billion people out there. There's a lot of expansion in there. Okay, uh, Europe 61% uh, uh, population. Middle East 35% uh, popular. I mean, penetration that the internet's out there. North America, we're at 78, probably one of the higher. Uh, uh, Latin uh, Caribbean is 39%. Uh, Australia 67 so worldwide the internet is only being utilized or uh, people uh, only 32 percent of the uh, popular uh, penetration of all the individuals out there a lot of room for expansion so don't worry if you're in advertising if, if you're advertising look at the internet that's another niche that you just be an advertiser an internet advertiser let the other ones out there and come on in there for my younger uh, students that know uh, what they like or don't like, how do I get connections, how do I advertise, how do I don't come across like a spam, a spammer for lack of better words. Unless you are a spammer, okay, so you turn that off. Okay, who uses the internet? That's a good question. Let's look at this one. Here's the internet. Men and women equally. 
might give or take. There's a little more, probably more men than women in the world, but equally, 81%. Uh, uh, white, 83%. Black is non-Hispanic. Uh, uh, or well, 71% Hispanic, English, and Spanish speaking. Still not bad. Those numbers are really high up there. Age, 18 to 29. 94. If you look at the younger generation, Generation X, Generation Y, Millennium, almost 100% are already very comfortable with the internet. 30 to 49, 88%. 60, 50 to 64, 79. The numbers are good. 65. Look, half of 65. Remember, those are my older generation. They saw things going. They are on the internet. House call income. I'm looking at this one with this one here is uh, 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 adults uh, percentages high school in, no high school diploma only 45 percent and that may be because they may not be uh, uh, be able to read I'm not saying that or they may not feel as comfortable with technology in high school graduate 73 percent if I look at that in high school you're already uh, doing your research you're doing your papers you're doing the internet some college 91 percent college plus you're almost 100 percent you can't go to college without not knowing how to do the internet or utilizing some uh, aspects of the internet and this with email and everything else. Measuring internet audience. Now here's where the whole thing is a little bit harder. Let me just kind of close these off a little and we'll see how we do. So it's easier. Okay, so what do we have? How do people access the internet? That's a good measurement. If I know how to access, I know how to reach them. How do people use the internet? I have to understand the behavior. And some of what I do when they visit my site, I could track them. Media planning tools. How do I plan to uh, have my ad run at a certain time? because of my uh, demographics that I identified and their behavior. This is the best time for me to saturate and reach them through the internet. Enhanced tracking, you know, you're talking about uh, cookies, third parties, something that anytime you ask for your uh, information, anytime you go a site, do they leave like a cookie, like uh, 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 Little Red Riding Hood, so she didn't get lost, she, she put cookies and then the other birds ate them, but she could follow her way back and seek standardization. So how do I manage the internet to see if I'm doing uh, my ad is measurable? How do I do that? Okay, so let's go on here. That's just a quick overview. So you got broadband, no problems. You know, connections, easy. Most people got broadband. Uh, description of ability to transmit multiple things simultaneously in one data line. I just had my Comcast replaced because I was losing it. I thought there was something wrong. It's terrible when you're an online instructor and you're losing your internet halfway through. I'm recording. Took me a little longer. Narrow band, mobile devices, satellite. It's good. I had satellite. It's just I have to have a dish and too much wiring and everything else. But now satellite's uh, pretty good. You could have the one location and then to Wi-Fi, right you could send the signal out. So I don't have to run everything else, uh, cables, uh, 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 right to my dish, for lack of better words. You know, in a cable modem. Okay. How do people utilize the internet? Resp uh, represents the idea of future web. Companies that encourage sharing and collaboration. So if I'm looking at an organization, part of the internet, if I'm searching something, if it's an organization or a company or a site that gives me something, not a gift, but allows me some access. A lot of places, free Wi-Fi. What does that mean? I'm in their area. I could bombard them in that uh, thing with some of my advertising, very specific. I could do a lot of things when I give them free access. So they are obliging to me because I gave them Wi-Fi or I let them go in there or let them scan there while they're inside the store but I get their email address I get their uh, uh, smartphone ID so I could send them or I could see where they buy or how they track or what they do technology allows better uh, uh, us to better understand the users but also while a campaign is in market how do companies plan and track. So if I'm looking at this, this is just internet users. Uh, what have they done? Activities. Okay. Uh, upload folders, you know, 37%, 32% rate of product, service, uh, a person using online rating, 27 share files. The, I do that. I just don't like people going in. You know what I mean? I know everything is now is in the cloud. I'm a little old fashioned. Everything's in the cloud. What it means in the cloud? Someplace in the cloud. But it means if it's in the cloud, someone could capture my information, even though they say secure. It could be secure here, but if I take that disk out, and put it away. You can't get it unless I put the desk and, and reconnect into the system. So the cloud has its advantages. It uh, gives me flexibility. I don't have to carry files or anything else. This I could just pull it up. But it also has some security uh, issues. Okay, take material found online, eleven percent. Uh, create work on a web page, thirteen uh, percent. Uh, Use online social, sixteen percent. I thought that number would be a little higher. Create work. So there's uh, on here website to share with others online. So this is where you're trying to uh, target it. How can I uh, uh, give them something that they'll be able to 
download my product. Look, when I download a product, say if I'm going to download Mozilla Firefox, I could go to the electrical site. If I'm not paying attention, it says download here. It's a third party. It says I download and all of a sudden they put it in a uh, uh, fix your computer. That came in there. How the heck did that come in? So I'm very careful to make sure that I'm at the corporate sound, not using a third party. You learn that. Remember, most of you, remember, you're younger, uh, uh, my generation X and Y, millions. You basically are 80%. You grew up in internet. You know this stuff better than most of us, but be careful. Okay. Now, when I'm looking at, uh, okay, so what do I have? Planning tools? Okay, uh, 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 Comscore is one of the planning tools. Nelson Online tells me what, and all these tools, these are programs, these are things to help media planners choose the right vehicles, provide reports on their usage patterns across the websites, that's what they do, they're tracking you, and internet applications such as iTunes. iTunes is another one. I have it listed on here, uh, add to the dictionary. So Nielsen Online, so if I look at Nielsen Online, they have a thing what they call this uh, media, all internet activity on that computer. It is then tabulated, measured, and recorded. So if I was part of a, one of a Nielsen's uh, 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 hub or individual out there that they're recording, they see everything on there. I get something out of it for them, but I share how I uh, on the internet. So they're trying to say, okay, here's George. He's an educated individual. He's a consultant. He's an educator. He's whatever. He's a baby boomer. What is his behavior pattern on the internet? If I had that and I could see now, Jack is similar to George. Is his behavior pattern the same? Now, Jacqueline, is she the same like George's pattern or different? And once I understand that consumer or my audience pattern, that's a plus for me in advertising because like the cookies I could drop certain reminders certain hints certain promotional campaigns I could be interactive with them I think if they could look at the product I could say hey hi, uh, how am I doing that uh, uh, but I have to understand how they behave and at what time is the best time that they're on the computer and they're, uh, that I can reach them Okay, and there's another one that's Comscore. So they give me that information for free, for a price. Okay, what are cookies? Cookies are something I eat, I put on weight. But a software using HP uh, Interact. Small piece of information that gets stored in your web browser. So when you're in there, it makes it easier. Remember, uh, uh, you could have a history of your web browser. You click it on there. Oh, man, I forgot the site. It still saves it for so many days and they lose it. Or you could get rid of it, like a lot of individuals. They don't want anyone to come in and see what sites I've been on, uh, especially if it's sites that are questionable. I know my teenagers would always delete all the sites, not realizing I could go back and find where they've been at. But that's, uh, you know I mean? Uh, you don't want somebody else to know where you're at. Okay, so when you load, but what it does, it leaves a little cookie. So when you come close by, it's always listening. It's following you. It's not taking information. You know, some cookies could be uh, uh, bad cookies, for lack of, uh, uh, lack of better words, because they're not only taking information, even though in the background I'm here talking to you, they're storing this and sending it away. I would never know it. It's like a back door. They're just pshh. Giving, you know, I'm putting money into my uh, here and it's coming out this way. And information is money. Information to an advertiser is money. If I know how they think, what they like, and I know where they like it or they know what ads are appealing to them, I can make money. If I can make money, I can sell my product. If I sell my ads, they make more money. They come back to me for more ads. It helps the economy. It helps everything else. Everybody grow. Okay, so I got ad calls, time of day, clicks, browsers use, last time visits. So it gives me a, a pattern. Remember, there's more about you. If they come up with my name or if they type in your name on there, you'll be surprised what they have on you. And just companies know when you wake up, when you turn on the computer, when you're active. Remember, the computer is descending. It's like a, it's a sensor inside my house. It sees me, but it also, every key move is has to be transmitted. Somebody could pick that up. If I ain't watching, it's like a, a, a recorder indirectly, what they call a cookie. Or when I'm in there, it, it, it just populates everything else. Oh, you were here before. Or Amazon does this. Here's the last things you bought. Did you want to reorder these? Okay, and then ad servers is third party, you know, ad rotations. They change rotations for you. Central locations, you know, uh, when I look at central, uh, like Comcast or something else, they could send uh, your message or your advertising to a specific. Uh, 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 demographics or target uh, or ge geographic certain viewing audience if you wanted to 
uh, or you know when they had uh, uh, what do you call it the uh, around Easter time or Christmas, get all the religious programs on. Then they also have all the other religious uh, uh, Bibles and stuff you could buy. It's just, that's the audience is looking at. They're not bombarding people who are atheists, you know, looking at that, or people who are not as religious. If you're already looking at uh, uh, Moses or some of those, they already are in there, so they could give you, uh, they could uh, add on to a religious theme products that uh, you'd be interested in or charitable things that like give to this organization and everything else because oh you're religious you're, you already got that uh, uh, that emotions you're already connected you're you you, you want to help okay hopefully that's what the, the program is bringing out so the advertisements are in there for the nonprofit organizations that are taking this class remember you still have to advertise God will help you so much but you uh, you have to uh, plant the seeds out there and that's what the advertising does okay and now, now behavioral targeting. Okay, so I got tracking it. Okay, so now this behavioral targeting is, this is where there's some controversial. Because now you have the RFI files, that you know, this is a, a chip that's going to be replacing the, the, the barcodes and all the products that you see. It's a microchip, so it's sending, a, 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 it's like an antenna. Now, but it knows too much about me. Once you know my behavior, and you're putting certain triggers, are you subliminally making me buy that product without me knowing it? Different issues. And how much should they know about me? So I try to be, uh, keep, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's something, you know, there's always uh, ethical issues and uh, the reading uh, carries that on. Now this other thing is, uh, when you look at standardization, how do I know that the ad is effective? What does it do? It has to have a standardized Thing that I'm looking at all different types of ad and I rate them and I grade them because I'm going to come in here. So advertising impression, that's the biggest one. Is So I'm looking at combo, service, timeline. Well, how, look, so I'm looking at this. Okay, that's all right. This is Cirrus, Barra, Cyrus. I see more diagrams. And then all of a sudden, this one here, whoa, it got a fish. What the heck? Nemo! I'm just kidding, because my grandson's looking at that. But see, now this one is impressionable. So if I'm going to do, these are all good ads, basic, simple ads, but this one should have a higher rating than this because it caught my attention. Okay? So that's what I should look at standards and the click rate. Now, click rate. When I look at when they say you're going to have so many people going to visit your site, and Google does that by how they set up, you know, when you put in certain keywords, but uh, we'll get that in a little bit. But let's say click through rate. Clicks occur when a visitor moves a mouse pointer to a web link. So I find something, clicks on the mouse that goes to another page. So if I'm coming, finding something on your site that I'm in there, and I'm gonna go to order, I'm gonna go look, right away I get paid, I gotta pay them for it, by a thousand clicks, boom, boom. So then I look, I might not buy anything, I might just click by accident, but they're looking, hey, you clicked on that ad, to get more information, pay me. How are we going to do it? And, but dude, look how many people are out there on the internet. This global population is just watching. You know, in the United States, uh, uh, what was it like? Uh, uh, Eighty-seven percent people have internet connection. You, uh, you go to Asia, only twenty-seven percent. That's a lot of people there out there for the new internet. If I could learn them and learn their process, then I could start selling to them. Got to start thinking long term. And long term is not really that long. Look, 1990, and then it came out. Who knew it was going to become such a large, uh, uh, um, I don't know say monster, but a, a part of our life is just embedded, just treaded. I, uh, a lot of people can't live without the Internet. They can't uh, operate. Businesses can't. Everything's done with the Internet. My bank and everything else. People forget how to write a check now. This is a debit card. Okay, buying time and space on the Internet. Okay, let's look at this one. What do we have here? Okay, let me just... We have a certain thing. Let me just close this down so I can do one at a time. Okay, I'll slow down a little. I've been doing, I've been doing pretty good. I've been running about like an hour on some of these. Remember, for the, for my online classes that you're taking this, this is your lecture. This really works out better. You can read the book, but it's kind of nice to, to hear what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go pricing. How am I going to price online? You're going to be doing an advertising uh, uh, campaign for me, an advertising plan. 
Part of it is going to tell me what you're going to use. Most people are going to say, I'm going to do an uh, uh, internet. I get a lot of students, I do intro to business or different classes, and they're going to say, how are you going to reach your customers? I'm going to advertise the internet. Okay, how are you going to find your site? Well, I'm just going to type in. No, you had to have the print. You had to have the radio. Look at the site, the www, uh, GAM Consulting, www, whatever uh, 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 business you are, on your receipts. You have to have some way for them to find your seat. Once you're in there, you can put the cookie or they'll put it in their browsers as a favorite and then you're set and you're all right. But how do I get them into there? But the other thing is pricing. So let's look at the pricing. You have a lot of stuff here on pricing. We have different pricing vocabulary you should be utilizing in your paper. A banner ad, real quickly, comes across the top. Okay, when you come into uh, a lot of my uh, course management, they either had the college or had my name and something about them. Most common, built on uh, on a cost per thousand basis. How many people see the banner? Determined by number of ads to, uh, uh, displayed. So remember, when you're going to be advertising and you're, you're going to have an advertiser come in or you're going to do an agency and they're going to come up with the costing. So this is the most uh, common, easiest, uh, inexpensive. Keyword purchases. This one available on major search engine. You gotta be careful because you know if I am a subscriber to Google, it seems like all of Google stuff comes in first, even though they say no. Those who've got ads with Google still come up first. You got priority. I may be one million and two at the end. That's why a lot of times I don't go with the first one because I figure these are all already paid for. I'll just dump in the middle to look what I uh, I'm looking for. Okay. Click through, we talked about that. Uh, when a user actually clicks on a banner ad to visit the advertiser's landing page and affiliated marketing, advertising involved in e-commerce. Just something else like, a, uh, and I'm just uh, piggybacking on them. And they already have it, so I'm getting some information. It doesn't cost me, you know, it's a small business. It's kind of nice to piggyback on that. Okay, cost of targeting. Very selective nature of internet. The internet is large, huge unmanned a frontier you don't know sometimes uh, for additional costs uh, be combined with tracking technology to discuss later consumer targeting on the internet is very cost intensive because it's so hard to follow if you look at me in the internet i jump in here i go in here i do out of the blackboard i do something else i do another course management i'm doing it on my own line i'm going on my banking Follow me. Shoot, i'm all over the board how could you find out oh the only thing i got in common then i'm connected Somebody is following me. Okay, uh, stretching out the dollars is how to get enough reach with their advertising dollars. When I'm looking at, a, at an internet, anything else, i got to spend money on a web designer, spend money out there. How do I make sure that I'm reaching my audience? How do I make sure that you know I'm reaching them effectively, that they don't just uh, spam me out and now I'm locked out completely? Or they're doing something that, uh, or I get a virus. You know, but how do I know I'm reaching them? Because you tell me, I need some measurements. Excuse me. I would have took a drink if I was in the classroom. Okay, ad networks. Most advertisers work through act as brokers for advertising on the web. So just networks out there, they'll, they'll put your ad in at an appropriate time. If I'm looking and I'm a, a small business and I've got a web uh, thing, I could go on and there's web designs out there that for a fee they'll design, a, uh, give me a template. I'm a consultant, I'm a baker, and they'll do everything else. They'll do it with a... Uh, 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 for me, for a fee. And a lot of times that works out pretty good. As I get larger, I may want to have my own and control it instead of using a template because I can only use a template as long as I'm paying the fee. Once I stop the fee, I'm on my own. All that information is not mine anymore because it belongs to them. I've never actually purchased that web design. It's, I'm just utilizing theirs. Like I'm not making PowerPoint. I make the PowerPoint, but it's the, the software somebody else. So I got to always pay the, uh, the, the maintenance fee. Types of internet advertising. Okay. We've got exhibits, but I got corporate, commercial, search banners, video, rich media, email. So let's go with my exhibits. If I'm looking at different types, and this is, yeah, the Craigslist is all right. Craigslist, the questionable, but very survivable. They, they advertise everything. People like that. Uh, it's a, a style or we'll talk about that switch media added all these but these are the basically tight the banners and abundance the ones in the center are your core email sponsorships and classified ads okay so let me just close that okay corporate e-commerce uh let me just go on this one real quickly uh, uh websites microsites 
Uh, also did a real nice job on that. Just remember, commerce sites, websites, landing page. I'm looking for a corporation. What's the first page I go into when you go to a home? It tells me everything about the company. It's visual, everything else. It tries to plant those seeds very colorful into more detail. Okay? And so I have that. Okay, websites. What do I have there? Web images. Okay, micro. Uh, uh, singular focus supplement. Okay, landing pages, we talked about that. Gateway to deeper areas of the website. So I had to go into some place to find me. You'll go into, if you go into, those of you watching this on YouTube, I've got a whole bunch of old YouTubes. Look at some of my newer ones, I'm a little more relaxed. My old ones, I'm like, my name is, but I've gotten better. The internet, you have to learn. Remember, we've talked previous uh, things. I plan, I try it, I learn it, I make a mistake, I uh, don't make the mistake again, I modify it, go forward. That's how you're learning. That's how you learn how to do everything. Okay? So let's see. Types of internet. Uh, types of search engine. Let me look at how you get to do search engines. And I'm going to go with this one. Allow people to type a word or phrase. Very easy. Just like a librarian. You just have to spell. You know, that's how if you look at individuals who have a, a high school dropout and then finish high school and they have to spell. There's nothing wrong with dropping outside. We all make mistakes. You know, you drop out, you finish your GED, you go forward, and you, you end up with your uh, doctors if you know what you're doing. And I've been through that thing. I was not a... Uh, a, a good student when I was in high school. I was a rebel. Everything else, I just a late bloomer. But I've learned. And now, if I look at now internet, if you're looking for people taking a GED, you know, that's the equivalent for high school if you drop out uh, and you, you still go to college. But now you no more pay, uh, pension paper. They're already forcing them in that. You have to know the internet. It's all done online. It makes it easier. Grades yet. You could change the questions. You could be flexible. Okay? So, what do we have? Search engine resorts. I had just in search engines, uh, uh, Google, uh, uh, Google's the largest ones right here. I've thought Microsoft, but Google's the biggest one, very flexible. Microsoft is good. You know, uh, uh, if I look at uh, um, Internet Explorer, you know, what Microsoft, the only thing with that is always crashing. People are always trying to hack Microsoft or Google, uh, you know, they, they hack them, but not to that point. You know, they're not that upset with Microsoft because basically just a search engine. Uh, so they're the largest ones. Uh, Yahoo's coming up to 14. AOL is very sliver, but they used to be large, but they didn't change as the, the, the their audience changes. The audience became more uh, fluent in the Internet, where AOL is still basically doing everything for them, where people say, hey, we don't need all that. We can find our own sites. We just want the more to flex. Just give us the tools, not just the buttons. We want to create our own. Okay, now AdWords. Again, we had AdWords. If I look at AdWords, uh, you know, you know to, uh, to pay, have links or uh, an ads placed in relevant web pages and search resorts where companies can bid for keywords used in such a search. Remember, when you come in for the uh, things, it's kind of uh, unique. There's certain words that will trigger. If I'm looking for education I get a whole bunch of education how do I get the colleges first and which colleges come first so remember you pay for certain words that when education comes it's tied in with another word that will uh, bring you in okay so just understand it's uh, uh, you bid for different keywords which ones are important words okay such terms as uh, marketing and that's Google you know you can find it up results on your computer marketing Wikipedia. So if I'm just typing in marketing, marketing strategy, and some of you might have found me on YouTube by just typing this in, and I happen to pop in there, okay? Hopefully. Okay. And remember, if you're taking the, uh, uh, okay, advertisers, pay Google. Only when a search engine uses clicks on uh, the link is when you pay it. Amount that the advertiser owes for each click-through determined in an auction. So, you know, these are words. How much is the word worth, and how many times it comes up, here's what I have to pay. Google estimates about all that almost 15% of searches result in click through responses. 15%, that's not much, but when you got a million, a billion people out there, those uh, uh, adds up very quickly. And remember, it's only now 15%. I want to increase that number. You know, AdSense, earn money, okay? So uh, by allowing revenue ads to be displayed on your website. Uh, I can have a website and for a fee, uh, it's like if you look in Chicago and you see, uh, I need a roof on my roof. Uh, on my uh, 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 townhouse or home in Chicago. I don't live in Chicago. So I can't afford it, but an ad comes, hey, you're right by the expressway, right next to the expressway, come to George's uh, 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 
a winery for back of a better words okay i'll put it on there i'll pay you a fee and that's what they do so i don't have to do nothing i don't see the roof i don't care it's expressway it's not like i got any beauty my house is nice they're paying me for it i get a new roof it doesn't leak but everyone sees it so now i got a website and i'll let you advertise but yeah it doesn't compliment by i don't want you a direct competition you know, you'll see mcdonald's and burger king got the same ad no but does it make sense and can i make some money on that and earn some money Okay, Google's is other major ads. Set aside portion of pages for Google tests. Large websites uh, uh, don't use programs as AdSense. Prefer to sell the space themselves. Remember, AdSense is just sometimes it's an intermediary. It's like a realtor. They'll find you a place to put your ad. Hopefully, for the uh, clientele or the audience you're looking for, you say, "Here's who I'm targeting to. Could you help me place my ad in this?" To this demographic or this uh, 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 characteristics of my uh, buying audience I'm, I want to advertise to okay and then what do I have I got banners and buttons you know it's a banner you know uh, it's a little billboard spreads across the top and bottom of the web page that's all these things because sometimes you may see them in a quiz question uh, the test of a banner can uh, range widely anywhere from free to a thousand dollars per month Depends. Sometimes your banner, if it's like uh, Crusade of Mercy or Cancer, I will let you put on a banner there. I could usually write it off as uh, uh, as an expense for a charitable uh, or social responsibility uh, budget that I have on there. Okay, what do I have? Buttons similar to banners. Okay, just pop up. You took them. Rich media advertising includes graphic animations, ads with audio, even float over the page. I hate those. It goes over. I can't stop them. Hey, buy my product. Buy my product. Psh. That is obnoxious. It works well, it's cute at the beginning, but if you overdo it, I will never buy your product. From an advertising perspective, what part becomes an annoyance? What part becomes like, when they see it, it turns me off. If it turns me off, I'm not looking at the ad, I'm not listening to this noise. I'm trying to get rid of that noise, I want a clear picture, I want to make sure I don't upset my audience. I'm not talking what we talked last time about infocommercial. People love infocommercial. Some people, their whole life is infocommercial. They buy everything in infocommercial. I'm not making fun of that, but that's a certain niche. For me, too many commercials drives me nuts. I wouldn't do it. Once in a while, appropriately put in, oh, and I'm not bombarded by a whole bunch of other commercials, I may buy your product or at least look at it or consider looking at your advertising. Interstellar, as to play between pages and a website, popping up on the screen while a computer downloads a website. So it's coming up, another ad comes up. I'm already busy, I'm waiting for this to download. If I have a slower browser, it takes longer, I have more ads, but it pops up. Remember, it's just reinforcing, reinforcing different ads, print, media, newspaper, uh, uh, internet. It's just reinforcing. Not overwhelming, but in strategically placed cues, it reinforces me. Uh, uh, about the brand, making the brand strong, make me think about the brand, make me want to buy the, uh, uh, the product. Okay, so we have this one. Let's see some problems. Uh, uh, lacks mass media efficiency, complex, because I'm just saying every computer is different. If I have too much stuff, they may not be able to see it. They got the wrong flash drive, the wrong uh, browser, uh, you know, it doesn't play right with the browser. Cumbersome, crowded, a lot of people on there. Accountability, security is a big issue, and it's too democratic. It's too open for everyone to tell me whatever they want. Okay, using uh, uh, internet and in integrated marketing communication, it promotes purposeful dialogue. If any media, I could, you know, like look at now, you're doing a good dialogue. Feedback, promotional, uh, promotion uh, channel at the same time, very interactive. Interactive market. Require the, the problem is I had to have someone talking. Somebody sends me an email. Somebody puts a Twitter or someone's on Facebook. I ha or LinkedIn. And I have to be able to communicate back to them. If I don't, I'm gonna have problems. So I have to have an individual always manning it. It's a cost. Now that individual. So I say, hey, it's internet. It's free. I have a person responding 24/7. So I have to have three individuals. They're only working eight hours a day. Uh, it gives me five 24 hours. Three times eight, 24. Uh, uh, so, what's their cost for the individual? Am I paying them 20000 30000 and how many leads do I get? Or am I just maintaining them, just have a face? A lot of companies, larger ones, do that. They also have the same individuals looking to see if there's any kind of negative uh, 
comments on the internet and how do I overcome them by utilizing different tools when in the internet to promote my point of view or my message to my clientele. Okay? It's costly. Okay, so we have that one. Okay, now the global and internet. Again, global, you've got currency exchange. I'm teaching international uh, uh, finance. So I'm going to just talk a different strategy. But is, in the internet, again, I, I could uh, uh, transfer money. Never leave the United States. Never leave Lake Zurich. Transfer back and forth. But uh, there's different uh, costs. There's different work ethics. Local overseas businesses, I don't know what their customer base is. I have to rely on them. Non-speaking English markets. Uh, will my campaign, my advertise be acceptable? Uh, be as effective as it is for the speaking uh, type of uh, uh, English speaking audience? Now remember, Coca-Cola. Look at their ad. They're global. They've done an excellent job when they said it with the Coke. I could see them in Chinese. I see them in Ch Japanese singing. I don't know a word. I know they're talking about Coke. Good for you. It, right? And they got the Coke. They're all sad. And all of a sudden, they got the energy. So that works well. well. But it has to be a way that you'll be able to manage it uh, and measure it uh, cost effectively. Okay? Other interactive. And this is just one. An interactive TV. And you have that you buy online. You have like Nelson's uh, uh, rating, so you could rate the program right there on that. Or you have uh, uh, American Idol, you just go on there. Some of the TVs are already set up, you just press the button. And that's good to cable TVs because your remote will be able to do that. So going forward the next 5, 10 years, it's going to be even more complex, going to be more flexible. You might as well get going on it now, understanding the internet, understanding uh, how to utilize Google, understanding how to utilize different aspects uh, on the internet. Make sure you utilize my concept maps. I, you, you provide them. They always provide it to you in a PDF file. Add on to them. They're very easy. So what do we cover? We had a pricing, you know, stretching the dollars type of advertising. I can use a banner. I can use video. For your advertising campaign, what are you going to do? You can do the print. The print is the first one, the slogan. Then I'm going to go what? A lot of people go maybe to the internet. There's another way I could expand my other thing. The other thing is now I'm going to go on the internet. So I go on the internet. I could start putting voice. Remember, that's in a radio station. It doesn't have to be a radio. Same voice I'm doing. I put a voice makeover and put it inside um, on the internet. And when I send an email, my ad will also have a jingle and say, Hi! I haven't seen, I've done that once in a class. Uh, I send an email to a student and freaked her out. Or, or freaked them out. And also, they clicked an email when it first came out where they had the rich test. I could send a, uh, an audio and email. I haven't seen you in class. Please come back. And I didn't do that, but I, it worked out kind of nice. It, it's effective one time, but only so often. People, uh, there's a voice one I already know. Okay? So what do we have? We've done everything else. We've covered the internet. We're going to be talking about social media, I think, is the next uh, chapter. So we'll go a little more in, in detail. Most of us know everything about what we need to know on the internet, how to serve, how to attach files. Now what you've learned here is how you're pricing. How now would you see the banner come across? Would you see the different things popping up, the avatar or the different uh, 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 buttons popping up? Why the buttons on one side? How do I monitor every time you're in the internet in the site? When you click here, here, remember you're being tracked and you want to learn your behavior. And if they can find out how old you are, they find out some information. If you charge a lot of information, there's other companies, all they need is a few bits of information on the internet and they could find your whole history. For a fee not to scare you we're an advertising class that's what I want to do I want to understand my customers I want to understand this so I can help them I want to understand when they bought this product what's the next product uh, here I want to understand when did they wake up in the morning when did they turn on the internet what the uh, browsers did they use which ones did they go for which ones are more effective which ones uh, uh, give me a better uh, uh, flexibility on their browser or on their uh, a network that I want to advertise and you know don't be intimidated start the advertising you're learning you have it you may want to go on the internet it's really easy cut it put it on there but you have to make sure it's in the right file so somebody all uh, opens it up they could see it they don't have any problems so then we talked about different uh, software corrals a good one uh, Adobe is another one that uh, uh, once you learn it, it's a very interchangeable you know uh, dream we uh, 
between re uh, Reaver uh, for uh, web designs, but there's other other ones, and just a lot of local uh, colleges will also have uh, courses to uh, help you advertise uh, on the internet. And don't forget the Small Business Association. I've done my research on them, and it's a government agency. They will also help you on the internet. And, you know, to be a successful internet. Google, you to sign up with Google or, or, or some of the other uh, browsers, they will uh, uh, also help you as a small business to advertise. All right? So this is it. Everything you want to know about the internet, you're doing good. This is Chapter 15 using digital interactive media. Sounds a lot better than to say, here's what you need to know about the internet. Good advertising. I'm Dr. Jordan Machaki, and I'll see you in our next uh, uh, lesson, Chapter 16, coming up.